It's brew day! Getting all set up right now. Yeah, I think you guys seen my setup before, maybe. Just a little shitty bayou burner. I want to get another one because this one sucks with the wind. It doesn't have the wind guard. Propane, of course. This is my little uh, strike water uh, pot. The mash tun cooler. Built from scratch. Built from scratch. And then the bigger, bigger boy, of course. Got all my stuff set up. Um, so today I'm making a pale ale and I want to show you. So it's eight pounds of Avangard pale malt, two pounds of Maris Otter, half a pound of Caramel 10 or Crystal 10, and half a pound of Carapils. It's an all Cascade pale ale. So one ounce at 60, one ounce at 20, one ounce at 5, and one ounce dry hop. I'm using WLP 0001 California Ale Yeast. And I'm going to add one gram of gypsum, one gram of calcium chloride. Um, and a little bit of lactic acid in my mash to bring my pH down. My pH meter is broken, so I have to guess, which kind of sucks. But I'm having fun. So I'm going to mash at 152 for one hour. I need about 3.5 gallons of mash water and 5.5 for sparge. Uh, the strike tempo wants to be 166 so I can get to 152. That's a 1.2 quarts pounds thickness that I'm using for my mash thickness. I'm using tap water today. And uh, yeah, that's what's going on. The big old bag of grainy. It's a big bag. 19 bucks, god damn. They're raping me. They're raping me. But uh, yeah, so let the fun begin. I have my 3.5 gallons of water in here. I love these buckets because they have a little fill line for you, so you never really have to mess up. Anyway, let's get started. Quick tip always take your temperature in the middle of the pot. Like right in the middle. This is the middle. Alright, my water's up to temperature. So, always safety first, man. These can get really fucking hot. It's probably gonna be steamy. It's not bad. All right, my salts. Hopefully that all comes out. That works. I always add brewing salts just to change my water profile. Mix those in. Time to dump some grains. YouTube doesn't get me for having music in the background. I'm only pouring in a little bit at a time so that way it gets hydrated. You can pour the whole thing in if you want, doesn't matter. I just don't want dough balls. Yeah, dough balls is when it's when they're stuck together, all the grains, and they don't get hydrated. Creates like a little pocket. All right, let's pour the rest of. Smells fucking good. Kind of thick. It's like an oatmeal consistency. That's the way I like it, man. Just checking for dough balls. And since I don't have a pH meter, I'm going to 
add some lactic acid to try to get it down. I'm just gonna guess, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. You want your pH to be 5.2, between 5.2 and 5.4. A lot of science. Mix it up. Figure out the temperature. We want 152. I am sitting at 152.8. That's not bad. So we're going to go with that, we're going to roll with it. The timer on for an hour. Alright. So it's been an hour, I'm going to boil off now. I barely crack the little ball lock open. Just let it drip. You probably can't see well because it's dark in here. Sorry for that. Let me see what's going on here. Yeah, you can kind of see. We'll put you out in the light here in a minute. We'll show you the differences. I'm going to let this fill up, and we'll see the difference between the first one and the second. So there's the first Vorloff. You can kind of see, you know, it's hazy. It's got some little particles and proteins in it. So I'm going to pour that back. Here's the second runnings uh, of the Vorloff. Much clearer, less particulates. I'm going to do this two more times, then we're going to start, uh, sparging. Yeah. Cool. Alright. Alright, now I'm sparging with my 170 degree water. This is how I do it. Let's get my little stir paddle. And slowly fucking do this. It's a long, tedious task. But I like to leave at least one or two inches of water on top of the green bed at all times. You can kind of see that right now. And once it gets down to like one inch, I start doing it again. I like to do this for about one hour. I guess it's called fly sparging, I think. I'm not sure. Most people batch sparge, but I like to do this to wash my greens, so. That's what we're doing. You can do secret symbols with your stick. It makes your brew better. Like that. That's a secret symbol. Look it up. You don't know what it is. You can be fancy. But yeah. I'm gonna go down in here. We still got the valve half open, not half open, but maybe a quarter of the way. You want it to drip slowly out for at least an hour. And that's what we got going on. You just press the garage. <laughs> it's not that it's very narrow, but. Yeah. So I collected. Oh, I will. Collected all my wort, all my runnings. I'm gonna get a pre-boil gravity reading here for you, but you gotta mix it up. So I got the first runnings in here and the second runnings. So I'm gonna take a reading here. Ooh! Holy shit! This is hot. My hydrometer or refractometer is sitting in the sun. Probably gonna burn my eyeball off. Same 1042, which is good for a pale ale. I'm gonna take another reading real quick. I always like to take a couple because for some reason I can never get a good reading. That's always different. I don't know if you can see that. Zoom view. This one's saying 1047. I'm thinking we're at 1047. Time to boil, girls and boys. <laughs> so here's the hops that I have. As I said, it's an all Cascade Pale Ale. These are from Black Creek Hops, which I've never used, um, but they're local. 
Scottsville, Michigan. There we go. He's an all cascade, one ounce, is one ounce, one ounce, one ounce. Pretty cool, pretty new. I'm happy with the price. Starting to boil. Starting to get our hot break here. I'm gonna wait for all this foam to go underneath, all this proteins and foams go underneath. I'm gonna set my timer and uh, throw my first edition of hops. And I got my spray bottle. This is your best friend. Always have a spray bottle. Keep that shit under control. You spray the spray the foam. It will keep it under control. See that shit? You know when you're recording. We're good. Smell that first. Recording? We're good. First hop edition. Here they go. Always have your water on hand just in case it boils over. But I think we're good. I like to squirt the sides off just in case. Get all the hot matter down in there. And set your timer. That's it. Well, folks, the brew day has come to an end. I may have skipped a lot of details, but uh, I'm cool in the wart. I will take a uh, original gravity when it gets down to 70 and uh, pitch my yeast. We'll see how it turns out and I'll come back with a uh, beer review, home brew review. We'll taste it together and see if it's worthy of brewing. Cheers! Alright, so I'm transferring my finished wort into my brewing or fermenter. I'm using a bucket today instead of a glass. And my hydrometer broke, so I can't tell you the final gravity exactly, but I'm going to use the refractometer and uh, try to convert that, but yeah. Happy brewing! So here's something most people don't show you. <clears throat> this is what's left in my uh, boil kettle. Just pretty much hops. You know, I don't filter my hops. I don't do any of that when I'm transferring to my fermenter. This is what we got here. Here's the five gallon mark. I'm gonna put my finger on the outside and see if we can see. All right. We're a little bit over. Let's look at my finger right there. Boop, boop. A little bit over, pretty good. I think we did good. Let's add some yeast and ferment this shit. WLP001 Squeeze the fun out of it Kinda sucks my hydrometer broke but you know what It's part of home brewing. I just broke a bottle uh, capper the other day Lasted me a year though so You know this is life.